is Margaret Strickler, and I teach writing for the Well-Trained Mind Academy. So Proverbs are a short saying that will give you a general truth, so a truth that's generally accepted. So it might not be a truth that everybody agrees upon, but most people will agree uh, on the truth of the statement. For instance, every cloud has a silver lining. Not everyone's going to agree on every proverb being true or false. But if you, if I say to you, every cloud has a silver lining, um, that, is that something that you might agree on or not? Oh, right. So we can at least say that almost every cloud has a silver lining. Yeah, so these proverbs are generally accepted as true, and most people agree upon them from their own experience or from their own wisdom. They, they think, yes, this is a true thing. Um, are any of these words familiar to you? An adage or an aphorism? Maxim. When you look at these words, do any of them jump out at you as things that you're familiar with? So all of these words mean something similar to proverb, but they each have their own little twist. Some of them are quite similar, and others like motto, which is the one that you said you know. Uh, what, what would you know about motto? I think the different proverb and a motto might be that a motto is more personal. So a motto is something that someone would take as their personal saying, like a proverb, except one that you apply to your personal life all the time. Maybe you have one like that. Maybe you have a saying uh, that you kind of use as your motto to get you through the day. You might have something that gets you through. So even just something as simple as um, never, uh, never leave it till tomorrow if you could do it to today, right? That's a proverb, right? But it might also be a motto, a personal motto, if you found that that's really, really helpful to you in your life. So these, all these synonyms, while they have a lot in common with the word proverb, they are all a little different. But we are going to focus on the proverb. So one other thing I think it's important to note about the proverb is that they originally were uh, from the Bible. There's that whole section of the Bible called Proverbs. For instance, in the Bible, it says uh, that wisdom is more precious than rubies. And I think anyone can understand that and maybe agree on it. I mean, that's one of those proverbs that some people may think, no, no, I prefer rubies to wisdom. But we could argue about that. <laughs> so rubies are quite nice and it's hard to say, you know, but, but really, if you think about it deeply, and enough, hopefully the truth of that saying comes through, whether it's from the Bible or any other source. So um, we have the Proverbs section in the Bible, which is full of all these wise sayings. And then Proverbs have evolved to include um, wise sayings from people all over the place. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a proverb, like some of the ones that I've given um, as examples. And then we're going to take that proverb and amplify it. So this is the next thing that I want to really sort of get across is what does it mean to amplify something? So I, I'm going back to the, to, the, um, to the definition that might be what the high school student would understand, which would be to just make something louder, right? So if you turn up the volume on something, you're amplifying it. Your guitar has an amplifier, a way to make something louder. Um, some people are hard of hearing, and so in those situations, they might wear a hearing aid in order to amplify the sound. To amplify a proverb is going to be a little different than just turning up the volume on it, but in some ways it's similar. We're going to look at that proverb, and in a way, we're going to turn up the volume on the proverb. We're going to look at it closely, enlarge it, and make it bigger so that we can see it from another perspective, that we can understand it more deeply. In order to amplify our proverb, we're going to follow some specific steps. So we're going to have eight particular steps that we are going to use in order to amplify the proverb. Um, you are going to choose your own proverb for this assignment, and this is just an exercise that we're working through. But for this, you can find a, a proverb that actually speaks to you. Because the very first thing we're going to do in order to amplify it is to actually praise the proverb. So what does that mean? It means you kind of have to believe in it. You have to think that the proverb has a, uh, at least a kernel of truth. So for you and in your experience, 
most clouds do not have the silver lining, that would not be a good proverb for you to choose. But the very first thing to do is to find one that speaks to you and that you really, really agree with and you think is true. So number one, praise the proverb, praise the statements. Um, next, you're going to restate the proverb or to paraphrase it. You're gonna explain it in your own words. And that means not just writing it again with the same, you know, with, with synonyms, but really expressing it in your own way of understanding it. So we'll move on to number two. Um, after that, we're gonna go into the history of the proverb just a little bit. So this will require a little bit of research and you're gonna look into why it was said to begin with. Why would someone even come up with something like all that glitters is not gold? What might be the context for that statement? And then we'll continue and move into um, something that might oppose this, a contrast, and then something that might relate to it, a comparison. Finally, or next we'll get into an example, giving an example of how this proverb might be um, true, an example of how it, it can be found in real life. And for this, you can use the word I. This can be something that's written from the uh, first person. So you might start this with in my own experience. And then we'll move into other people's experience that you can find that have also had this experience or from history where you can show that this proverb has some truth to it. And lastly, you will conclude um, by bringing all of these ideas together. So this will be essentially the assignment. And I'm going to lay this out one piece at a time.